Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be building what I'm calling the ET125 Pro, um, which I think is going to be fantastic for learning, um, which is what I need to do. So hopefully for me, this will be great. Um, so this is, uh, I'm calling it a Pro, basically just because we're doing an upgrade. And unfortunately, when I built this, I did have some camera issues, so I didn't do the entire build. Uh, so this will basically just be a review of all the components I've used and kind of a quick uh, high-level overview of, of what I did and hopefully uh, a non-exploding maiden flight at the end. Here you can see on the screen um, we're going to be upgrading the majority of the features here. So motors will be upgraded from 1104s to 1106s. We will be including an OSD. Uh, ESCs will be upgraded from 10 amps to 20 amps. Um, power reliably uh, will support from a 2S to a 3S and we will be including a VTX with smart audio. In this next section we'll look at all the components that I used to put this build together and all of the links will be in the description below. Let's take a look. Quick look at the frame. The brand is LDARC uh, which used to be King Kong. It's 125 millimeters by 125 millimeters uh, Truex style uh, has nine millimeter motor mounts and the props are 2840s and the price is about fifteen dollars this is a pretty good size i think for outdoor flying for beginners um, i did expect to use it for indoor flying but it is a little bit big and maybe a little bit loud it may be possible to do a similar build with a smaller frame if you wanted to do indoor flying um, perhaps with the et100 for the flight controller we're using a furry b flight controller that was used in the Furry BX140, which overall had pretty good reviews. Uses the MPU 6000 gyro, so it should be pretty smooth. Has an OSD, does D-Shot 600, uh, has a 20 millimeter by 20 millimeter in size, and comes in at about $20 US. The ESC we're using is a Furry B ESC. It's a four in one, 20 amps. It's uh, 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters. And it will do from 2 to 4S uh, and comes in at around $25. For the motors, I went with the real ACC Orange 85. They're 1106 and they run at 6000 kV. I went with the lower kV because these motors can do 3S. And so I thought for a beginner, uh, it would be good to have something a lower kV that I can run on 2S for learning purposes. Eventually take the cowls off and just kind of grow with the quad. The camera is a very basic camera. 600 TV lines, 170 degree field of view, supports up to 5 volts, and has a built-in microphone, costs about $7. For the VTX, I went with the EWRF E7082TM. I went with this VTX for two reasons. One, it has uh, PWM control through OSD, and two, it supports audio. Unfortunately, size-wise, this is not a very good fit for this frame as it does not fit up underneath the battery. If you don't care about the audio, I would recommend the EWRF E7082C as it doesn't have the audio and it will fit up inside the base of the frame underneath the battery perfectly. The only feature that's missing for the C is the audio. Both have switchable power 25 to 200 milliwatts. They both support PWM for OSD configuration and support up to 48 channels. Hey guys, so I got myself a uh, ET125 kit. Uh, so in here you get uh, the ET125 frame with the uh, four protectors, the frame, you get the little pad, and you'll get uh, a bunch of screws, you get two sets of props, yellow and white. And I really, I really like this frame. Um, but I didn't really like the components that came with the ET125 itself. And so I opted to just get the kit and uh, build one myself. So um, I've already soldered it up. I didn't want to get into the detail around the soldering, um, but I'll go over some of the things I found with the kit um, and some of the components that I got. And I'll go over, I'll overlay all the components on the screen. Um, overall, I think uh, it's pretty good components. So we've got basically um, an Omnibus F3 20 by 20. Um, we've got a, I believe a 
20 amp. I'll validate that and put it on the screen. ESC. And overall, I, I think this is a pretty good stack. I think actually this is this exact same stack that's in the uh, the Furry B um, X145. So, and it's got great reviews, which is why I went with this stack and it's fairly cheap. Uh, for camera, I just got basically a little no-name uh, 600 TVL camera that I've just glued in there. And I did get one with a little microphone, not sure if you can see it. And so I've got audio set up here. Um, for VTX, I went with the, uh, the EWRF E708 2TM. And the main reason for that is because I wanted uh, smart audio. And now, unfortunately, this is a little bit too big to fit in underneath here. Uh, so we're going to have to find another place to mount it. Um, I might replace this later. We'll see. Um, but it will give us smart audio, which I've already soldered up on the, on the bottom of the board um, to UR2. Um, is already soldered up. Now, a couple of things I did find. Um, I had to, the layout of this of this flight controller is quite nice. Um, overall, so the video in has a plug, which is great. Um, this camera had really bad wiring, so I just took the old wiring off, um, which is crap, um, and put this nice silicone wire connector on it, uh, which came with the flight controller. Flight controller also came with another ESC cable, um, so you have two. Uh, one problem I did have, um, I noticed that the cable that comes with the flight controller for connecting up your receiver uh, had <clears throat> had the wrong pinout, and um, I'm not sure if they all have that problem or if it's just this one, but I did notice. Looking at the instructions here, uh, the receiver should be signal positive and negative, and so I've now swapped those around. But it was um, ground positive and signal. Um, not sure that that matters at all, but you can either solder it correctly or swap the wires. So I just used to. An exacto knife to pop the pins out. I swapped the, uh, the signal and the ground wires, and now this will work just fine. Um, another thing you need to be careful of so there's not enough room. I'm using a pretty low stack, uh, so there's not enough room for both of the um, connectors here between the ESC and the flight controller. Um, so I'm, and also because the I've got them hot glued here, so you can't really see, but um, the ESC um, pads stick out, you know, about three millimeters from the actual board. Uh, so it's not exactly 20 by 20, and unfortunately, pretty much between these two posts here is pretty much 20 by 20, so I had to put this, the ESC in there sideways, which actually worked out great for this connector here anyways. Um, and so overall, I think it's a, it's a really nice setup. Um, so the at least the flight controller is still pointing straight, which, I mean, not a big deal, but uh, it's kind of nice. Less fiddling around in, in beta flight. Um, the old motors we're using here uh, is a bit of an upgrade as well from the, uh, the ET-125. Um, I think the ET-125 has the 1104 motors. Um, and I'm not sure if you can read it there, but we've... I've opted here for the uh, 1106 6000 KV motors. Um, also slightly, uh, the KV um, in this case should be able to handle 3S, no problem. Uh, the original ET125 uh, says not to use 3S, so that should be fun. Should get a little bit of extra oomph out of this little guy, I think. Um, yeah, so it's basically, I guess what I'd call the ET125 Pro, <laughs> I guess if you will. So it'll have OSD, um, smart audio, audio, um, yeah, uh, D-Shot 600 out of the box, and 
should be fun to fly. Uh, I also recommend just mounting, I just mounted the motors here with one, I'm not sure if you can see that, but one screw on each motor just to get them in there. Um, once you've got everything all wired and soldered in, basically all you need to do is just lift that one wire, slide this in underneath, and then they give you longer screws um, to screw into the motor. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that now and get all these um, prop protectors on here and see what it looks like. All right, so I've got all of the uh, prop protectors on there. And uh, I have to admit, it was a little tricky to get them in there by myself, um, trying to line all the holes. It's kind of a pain. I just put uh, two screws in each for now. Um, yeah, it also comes with these nice little uh, elastics. They get two elastic bands to hold the battery in. It's pretty good. And you also get this padding that goes on the back there. Um, which I think will be <laughs> tricky to get on um, with the elastic already on. But you had to put the elastic in because it goes in under the stack, so we'll have to see how, how that's going to work. Um, but overall pretty good. Um, so what I've done so far, basically what I'm going to do as I run, it's going to be kind of ghetto, um, but I've run the VTX cable out the back and probably what I'll do is once I get this on, I'll probably zap strap um, the VTX on the back of the, the little thing like that. I think that'll be fine. There are some holes here. I can probably just zap it up like that. And have the antenna come straight up there as well. Um, we'll see how that works. Um, but generally, yeah, I really like um, this kit. It's a really nice, small, clean kit and um, I think for learning to fly this is going to be amazing so it's going to have all the power you need it's going to be you know small enough you can learn indoors um, and definitely powerful enough to take it outdoors and do some acro um, I'm really looking forward to it all right so I'm going to uh, get it all set up I'm going to solder on an XT30 connector here I'm going to put the pad under here and and then I think it's time for um, oh, yeah I can't I have to get the hmm, yeah we'll have to get the beta flight stuff set up before I put this down because I won't be able to get to the USB port um, once I put this on so I'll probably have to get the motor direction and everything sorted out first so I'll probably do that now so I haven't done a beta flight just yet, but I wanted to plug in the power and on video see if it explodes. I did check with the multimeter, uh, looked fine. So just make sure we have red to red. That is important. So a quick tap. And sounds good. All right. It's too sunny to keep my eyes open. Is it too sunny? Yeah, it's too sunny. Alright, I'll come back. I'm gonna land. Ready? Yeah. Landing. <laughs> 